Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel on engineering mathematics. In this video, I am going to discuss the concept of non-linear programming problems that is NLPP. In particularly, we will see introduction to NLPP, introduction to categories of NLPP as unconstrained and constrained NLPP. Then we will see how to solve unconstrained NLPPs. Next, we will see introduction to Hessian matrix, some solved examples and finally an exercise. So let us proceed with first point introduction to NLPP. NLPP is a type of optimization problem where the objective function or some of the constraints are non-linear. For example, following problem is NLPP. Objective function is optimize z is equal to x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square subject to the constraint 4x1 plus x2 square plus 2x3 is equal to 14. Given that x1, x2, x3 are all non-negative. Note that here objective function as well as the constraint are of degree 2. Therefore, this LPP problem is actually NLPP, non-linear. I hope you understood what is meant by NLPP. Also note that NLPPs are widely used in the field such as engineering, economics and operation research to optimize the complex systems. Now let us proceed for the introduction of categories of NLPPs as unconstrained and constrained NLPP. First, unconstrained. No constraints are applied to the decision variables, then we say that NLPP is unconstrained NLPP. It focuses solely on the optimizing the objective function. For example, find the relative maximum or minimum of the function z is equal to x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square minus 4x1 minus 8x2 minus 12x3 plus 50. Such kind of problem is unconstrained NLPP because there is no constraint associated with this objective function. Whereas in constraint NLPP, we have one or more constraints that can be either linear or non-linear. For example, here in this problem where we are asked to optimize z is equal to x1 square plus x2 square, we have constraint x1 plus x2 is equal to 1, given that x1, x2, x3 are greater than or equal to 0. So this problem is of course constraint NLPP because it has a constraint. So it is easy to categorize NLPP into constraint and unconstrained. If the NLPP has constraint, it is constraint NLPP. If the NLPP has only objective function without any constraint, then it is unconstrained NLPP. In this video, we are going to focus only on unconstrained NLPPs. In my next video, we will cover constraint NLPPs. So let us proceed to see how to solve unconstrained NLPP. There are several steps. Let me show you. In step one, we find the stationary point at which function may take maximum or minimum value by solving equations daba z by daba x1 equal to 0, daba z by daba x2 equal to 0, daba z by daba x3 equal to 0 and so on. Where z is the objective function and x i s are the decision variables. So we partially differentiate z with this x i s and equate it with 0. These equations will occur. Solving these equations, we will get a point. We are calling that point as a stationary point. Later on, we will see whether at this stationary point function attains maximum or minimum value. This we will see in step 2. Assume we get the stationary point P by solving these above equations. Then we proceed for step 2. Here to find whether the stationary point is point of maxima or minima, we check which of the following conditions are satisfied. First condition is, if determinants of all the principal submatrices of the Hessian matrix at point P are positive, then P is point of minima. Second condition says, if the determinants d1, d3, all odd determinants of submatrices of the Hessian matrix are negative at point P and determinants d2, d4, all even order matrices, submatrices of the Hessian matrix are positive at point P, then P is point of maxima. Whereas in other cases, that means other than these two cases, the point P is called a saddle point. That means function neither attains maxima nor minima. Here, Hessian matrix is unknown to you. So let us recall what is Hessian matrix. 
for two variable objective function we design hessian matrix as follows it is a two cross two matrix with diagonal entries daba 2z by daba x1 square daba 2z by daba x2 square and other diagonal entries are daba 2z by daba x1 daba x2 and daba 2z by daba x2 daba x1 whereas for three variable objective function hessian matrix is given by a three cross three matrix whose row wise entries are daba 2z by daba x1 square daba 2z by daba x1 daba x2 daba 2z by daba x1 daba x3 second row is daba 2z by daba x2 daba x1 daba 2z by daba x2 square daba 2z by daba x2 into daba x3 and third row is daba 2z by daba x3 into daba x1 daba 2z by daba x3 into daba x2 and last element is daba 2z by daba x3 square guys these matrices are almost symmetric you can see it over here now let me tell you the kth order principal sub matrix of h is the smaller square matrix obtained by removing n minus k columns and n minus k rows of the hessian matrix h what i mean is the first order principal matrix of this 2 cross 2 hessian matrix is obtained by removing 2 minus 1 because i am finding first order so 2 minus 1 and 2 is the order 1 is the sub order of the sub matrix so 2 minus 1 we will remove those many columns and those many rows so this is first order hessian sub matrix this is 2 cross 2 that is order 2 uh, sub hessian sub matrix coming over here this element indicates h1 these four elements indicates h2 order 2 sub matrix and all these elements indicates h3 that is order 3 hessian sub matrix i hope you understood what is mean by principal sub matrices now let us see some examples in this first example we are asked to find the relative maximum or minimum of the function z is equal to x1 square plus x2 square minus 4x1 minus 8x2 plus 100 since there is no constraint here this is unconstrained nlpp and we just saw how to solve unconstrained nlpp in step 1 we are supposed to find the stationary point and to find that stationary point we are supposed to solve equations daba z by daba x1 equal to 0 and daba z by daba x2 equal to 0 why only two equations because there are only two decision variables involved in the objective function therefore we have these two equations let us find daba z by daba x1 since this is partial derivative we have to keep x2 constant so derivative of x1 square is 2x1 derivative of x2 square is 0 derivative of minus 4x1 is minus 4 derivative of minus 8x2 and 100 is 0 so daba z by daba x1 equal to 0 leads to 2x1 minus 4 equal to 0 which when further simplified gives us x1 is equal to 2 similarly daba z by daba x2 equal to 0 gives us 2x2 minus 8 equal to 0 which when simplified gives us x2 is equal to 4 since these two equations gives us values of x1 is equal to 2 and x2 is equal to 4 we don't have to solve them simultaneously we already got the values of unknown decision variables x1 and x2 together they gives us the coordinates of the stationary points so here corresponding stationary point is x1 comma x2 is equal to 2 comma 4 now let us proceed for step 2 in step 2 we are supposed to determine whether the obtained stationary point is point of maxima or point of minima for that we need a hessian matrix since there are two decision variables the hessian matrix will be of order 2 it will look like this here we need to obtain these partial derivatives let us differentiate this with respect to x1 to get daba 2z by daba x1 square so differentiating this with respect to x1 we get daba z by daba 2z by daba x1 square is equal to 2 similarly differentiating daba z by daba x2 with respect to x1 we get daba 2z by daba x1 into daba x2 which is zero here because there is no x1 so all the terms are constant and derivative of constant is zero 
Now differentiate this with respect to x2 to get daba 2z by daba x2 into daba x1, we get 0. And differentiating this with respect to x2, we get daba 2z by daba x2 square is equal to 2. Now we substitute these values into this h matrix to see h is equal to this square matrix of order 2. We see all the entries are constant. There is no x1, x2 in these entries. So value of this h matrix at the stationary point remains same. Now we obtain determinant of sub matrices of this h matrix. So here order 1 sub matrix is h1 is equal to 2 and order 2 sub matrix is this entire matrix. Their determinants are respectively 2 and 4. We see determinants of sub matrices of this Hessian matrix are all positive. Therefore, this stationary point is point of minima and Z attains a minimum value at this stationary point. So let us obtain the minimum value of Z by substituting this stationary point into Z. So Z at 2 comma 4 when calculated by substituting x1 is equal to 2, x2 is equal to 4, we get it is equal to 80. Therefore, here we find minimum value of z is 80. I hope guys you understood this method. Now let us proceed for second example. Once again, we are given an objective function whose relative maximum or minimum value we have to find out. This time in this objective function, I see there are three decision variables x1, x2 and x3. So in step one, to find the stationary point, we have to solve three equations, namely daba z by daba x1 equal to 0, daba z by daba x2 equal to 0 and daba z by daba x3 equal to 0. Let us find this first equation. After differentiating z partially with respect to x1, I get first equation is 1 minus 2 x1 equal to 0, which when simplified, we get x1 is equal to half. Similarly, daba z by daba x2 equal to 0 gives us equation x3 minus 2 x2 equal to 0. Similarly, daba z by daba x3 equal to 0 gives us equation 2 plus x2 minus 2 x3 equal to 0. From first equation, we already got the value of x1. Now we want value of x2 and x3. For that, I look at the second and third equation. These are linear equations in x2 and x3, which can be solved easily simultaneously. So after solving second and third equation, we get value of x2 as 2 by 3 and value of x3 as 4 by 3. Guys, you can pause this video and check this entire calculation. Now, after finding these values of x1, x2 and x3, we write the corresponding stationary point x1, x2, x3 is half comma 2 by 3 comma 4 by 3. Now let us proceed for step 2. In step 2, we determine whether the function attains maxima or minima at this corresponding stationary point. For that we need a Hessian matrix. Since there are three decision variables, Hessian matrix order is 3. This will be the required Hessian matrix. Let us find all these derivatives. We have already values of daba z by daba x1, daba z by daba x2 and daba z by daba x3. Let us obtain daba 2z by daba x1 square. For that we differentiate this with respect to x1. So after differentiating this with respect to x1, we get daba 2z by daba x1 square is minus 2. Similarly to obtain this value, I differentiate this with respect to x1. Since there is no x1, its derivative with respect to x1 is 0. Now differentiate this with respect to x1 to obtain this derivative. Once again, there is no x1 here, so its derivative is 0. Now let us obtain this derivative. For that, I differentiate this with respect to x2. Since there is no x2, its derivative is 0. Now differentiate this term with respect to x2. We get daba 2z by daba x2 square is equal to minus 2. Differentiate this one with respect to x2, we get daba 2z by daba x2 into daba x3 is equal to 1. Similarly, you can obtain other three derivatives. These are their values. You can pause the video and check these calculations. Now let us substitute these derivative values into this matrix. So we got this H matrix. I see this time also H matrix is a constant matrix. 
no x1, x2, x3 is included in any of the entry of h. So after substituting the stationary point in h, we get the same h matrix. Now let us obtain submatrices of h. The order 1 submatrix h1 will be only minus 2. Order 2 submatrix of h will be these 4 entries matrix and this entire matrix will be order 3 submatrix. Let us calculate their determinants. Determinant of h1 d1 is minus 2. Determinant of h2 denoted by d2 is 4 and determinant of h3 denoted by d3 is minus 6. I see determinants of odd order submatrices is negative and determinant of even order submatrices of h is positive. Therefore, this fits into the second criteria that I have shown you earlier which indicates the stationary points is point of maxima. Therefore, this objective function z attains maximum value at this stationary point and its maximum value can be obtained by substituting that stationary point into z. So let us calculate z at 1 by 2, 2 by 3, 4 by 3. After substituting and simplifying, I see z max is 51.58. Guys, you can pause this video and check this calculation. Now it is your turn to solve some examples. These are couple of examples for you. Their final solutions are written over here. Guys, please write me in comment box whether these solutions are correct or not. Also write me how much useful you find this video is for you. Guys, till I publish my next video, keep watching my videos, keep solving these examples. Thank you all of you. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe my YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get updates about my new videos.